everyone, and welcome to the trade table. Nick Bowen and Ash Brown are here with me. This is the place to debate all the rumours, all the speculation that comes with the NAB AFL trade and free agency period. Guys, it is always a very busy time of year. Certainly is, Matty, but we do love it. Lots of surprises and lots of talking points every year, Matty. Yes, yeah, certainly. Let's begin with a big story this free agency period. James Frawley electing to move to Hawthorne. Of course, he's been linked with other clubs during the season, but he does go to the reigning premiers. The interesting part of this debate, though, for mine, is the compensation pick. Melbourne has been given pick three by the AFL. Nick, do you think that's too high a price? Matty, look, I do. I think that, you know, that there's no doubt that Demons probably deserve, I think, a first-round pick, Ash. But pick three seems to be a little bit steep. And I suppose there's a question of whether we can have a more flexible formula where the pick's not tied into a team's ladder position so that he was, say, more mid-round, say, pick eight to 12. Well, pick three compared to... Pick 19 for Franklin's an absolute He's joke. Still bleeding about that, mate. I will never. I'll, I'll bear that, take that on to, to my grave. But I agree with you. They should have a band like your mid round first, middle first round, yep. end first round, mid second. That way, I think it makes a lot more uniform, a uh, lot less uh, controversy, and might uh, aid the trading as well. I think though, there's talk about scrapping the, the compensation picks altogether, obviously. But I think we really still need to keep those in there because you know teams like Melbourne and, and the lower ranked teams are losing these players to the Hawthorne of this world, and I think for the equalisation stuff to work, they, they need to be compensated. I'd be very comfortable with no compensation at all. Ooh, so would gee. I for mine. Now you can invo get involved in the discussion on Twitter a bit later <laughs> if you want. Paddy Ryder wants out of Essendon, of course, in the shadows of the supplements scandal. He wants to go to Port Adelaide. Negotiations for that underway. But I get the feeling, guys, that this one could drag on throughout the period. If the power do get Ryder, though, Ash... Would and should that make them flag favourites, do you think? Well, it will drag on because Essendon's involved. And Essendon are <laughs> notoriously, and sorry, Bomber fans, your club is the hardest club to deal with during the trade period. Wow. And that is a universal opinion. Having said that, um, if uh, Port are going to lose guys like, uh, if they had to lose an Ollie Wines or a Hamish Hartlett or a Chad Wingard to do the deal to get Ryder over the line, Nick, then they probably won't be the flag favourites. But oh, gee, Ryder, if they don't have to lose a player, if they don't do that, that will complement them beautifully. Look, I think that there's no way known they're going to do that. I think that there's, their pick 17s on the table. I think that's a reasonable one. And the, the problem here, though, is let's be honest, Essendon really can't play hardball. I mean, there is the Asada investigation at the back of this. Paddy Ryder is possi a possibility to explore his right that there's been a breach of his contract and that he can become a uh, delisted free agent. Surely Essendon don't want to get to, get to that stage, Ash. No, agree. Essendon should just take the deal, the 17, whatever it is, move on and, and go on. Back I think they will be close to flag favourites if they get him. It'll really uh, shore up their ruck division. Absolutely. Makes right. them top three. Buzz is gone. Collingwood's Dane Beams <laughs> and his request for a trade to Brisbane. It's causing plenty of debate with Collingwood, of course, demanding fair value in return for their star player. But just what is fair value? The Lions have thrown pick five into the mix. The Pies, of course, want more. In fact, they want a player. Is, is it fair enough, Nick? Look, Matty, Beams is an out-and-out -out gun. There's no doubt about that. But I think pick five is a really good starting point. I think that the, the Pies have been pretty uh, unrealistic, I think, Ash, with some of the players that they're, they're targeting, obviously Redden and, and Aish among them. Uh, look, I don't see that getting done. I think, you know, maybe pick five... Brisbane Lions second pick, maybe another fringe player, say Mitch Golby, is much more realistic. Yeah, I agree with you, Nick. There, there, it's got to be a pick five and a, a lower pick or something like that, or certainly not a starting 22 team. Brisbane are getting that chemistry of the locker room right again after all the five departures a year before. What they don't want to do is meddle with that and, and lose a guy like Redden. Beams, it must be said, though, is the, now the second best midfielder at Collingwood. So yeah, it's yeah. A, he's going to be a huge loss for them. And the, even the, Greenwood, who we'll talk about coming in, is not going to uh, make up for loss of the Burns. The Pies, too, though, we should say, in a, in a far stronger position than Essendon in this negotiation, uh, aren't they? Yeah, they yeah. are. Alright, one more year left on his contract. This is one of my favourite stories of the trade period so far. Patrick Dangerfield. If the Crows trade for him now, well, they might be able to get some value, otherwise they'll lose him next season potentially for nothing. Now, we've been following this story closely on afl.com.au and the Crows have now, after a couple of weeks, definitively taken him off the trade table this year. But is that the right call? Ash, do you reckon they should be fielding offers? 
Well, we now know that Phil Walsh is a new coach of the Adelaide Football Club, and I, I don't know where Dangerfield is, whether he's in Moggs Creek or whether he's in Mount Kilimanjaro. Phil Walsh has to go and find him, sit down as his first point of order and say, do you want to be part of this football club in the long term or not? If the answer isn't equivocal, then you go out there and you start doing the deal. Let's be honest, Ash, I think the answer is yes. I think that the drumble, the drum, drumble, uh, drumble beats, drumble beats, the jungle <laughs> drums rather, uh, uh, they're really sounding. And I think, look, Hawthorne and Geelong are already, really, already really confident of getting him next year as a free agent. And we know that if that happens, they're only going to get sort of a first round pick. And if they have a good year next year, that could be in the teens. Melbourne have got picks two and three now. Now, Paddy may not want to go there, but look at Collingwood. They could stand to get pick five with Beams. They could package up one of their young South Australian kids, say a Brody Grundy. That's a, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, I'm with you. They should absolutely do this deal, Adelaide. Can we please get the drum kit to the studio for Nick Bowen, if that's all right? <laughs> drum kit to the studio. North Melbourne has been the most active of all the clubs so far, signing two free agents, of course, Jared White and Sean Higgins. But if the latest news, which is coming out as, as we record this afternoon, is that Levi Greenwood wants to leave the club for Collingwood. So, Nick, I guess the question for you is, have these early moves from the Kangaroos backfired already? Well, Tom, why don't you ask the question, mate, that you're really asking, and that is, have Jared Waite and Sean Higgins cost North Levi Greenwood? And I think that if you look at the uh, footy f uh, fan forums today, actually, the, the real question in North supporters' minds is, has Sean Higgins, who's a much more similar player to Greenwood, cost them that? Look, I don't think he has. I think that it's really been a case that uh, North perhaps has been too slow to come to the table, but the Magpies offer is astounding. I believe it's four years, $1.8 million. North Melbourne, in their right mind, couldn't match it. It was probably only halfway through the year as well that Greenwood really found some form, wasn't it? I mean, he wasn't... Oh, it's a bit, it's a bit earlier than that. It's a surprise one for North. They, they would like to have thought that adding Waite and Higgins to the side with Greenwood already there it really makes them strengthen again their top four claims for next season. Greenwood's a loss. Um, they'll, be fl they'll be flat about this. Don't no, no mistake I, about I it. I think they would be very disappointed. Yeah. Jack's given me some more time in my ear. So are North going to be better or worse with these two additions, or with the loss of Greenwood? Look, I can only say my gut feel is I would have preferred Levi Greenwood over Sean Higgins. Yeah, I'm with you. Greenwood, Higgins, I'm not sure he's in your best side. Greenwood now absolutely is. All right, you're watching NAB Trade Table. As it stands, St Kilda has the number one pick on their table, making no secret of the fact that it is indeed available. So, Ash, should they keep it or do you reckon they should uh, trade it away? Well, the, the number one need is a key forward. They need more key forwards. Whether they're going to get that by doing a, a, giving away pick once, they still keep two or three to get McCartan or Wright, who are the, the best key forwards, or whether they can extract one from another club. That's the, got to be their key priority, St Kilda. So I think, look, we've got another what, seven or eight days before the trade period for news. Keep talking, Saints. You've got till two o'clock on Thursday week to get the deal done. So keep talking, try and extract it. It'll be the first time since Hawthorne and Fremantle did the deal in 2001. I think, I think Ash, let, let, let's, let's cut to the chase. I think if, if it's going to get done, it's going to be with GWS. They've got sort of pick four. There's a chance to try and sort of match that with another pick. I think that the, the uh, Blues are sort of talking with uh, Greater Western Sydney about perhaps downgrading their pick seven to get Christian Jacks uh, into the club. So that might be a possibility. The other possibility is pick four with one of the uh, the young guns at, at uh, Greater Western Sydney. It should take some adventurous dealing from the Kilda to get it done, but I look forward to the great Chris Pelton making it happen. The great Chris Pelchin. Cheers, you're sucking up there, mate. Well, he's a legend of the club and you love him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Greater Western Sydney stable of young talent is the envy of all other clubs. But as they develop, the competition for playing time and contracts gets tighter within the club. And inevitably, you'd think the Giants won't be able to keep everyone. Once again, there are a few highly touted youngsters who've requested a move, including names like John O'Rourke and also Christian Jacks. So, Nick, is this the beginning, do you think, of a mass exodus? Not at all, Matt. I, th I think this has always been on the plan, Ash, hasn't it? I mean, they've had such an array of young talent. They knew they were always going to lose some. As long as they held on to the ones they really wanted to, the, the young guns are in their best 22. Got draft picks in for the other the other kids who are obviously really talented, Ash, but just not talented enough to be at, at the Giants, <laughs> then, then they're winners. Yeah, you're right. They just wanted to draft as many as they could, give them three years, see who could play, who's in their best 22. We look at who's gone already. Tyson and Homs will be a couple that's probably still locked over on their side. Maybe Adams, but the others have just would only be dead. 
depth players now. They, it's been a really good strategy by the Giants to build their list to be in this position now where they can do some wheeling and dealing. And I think the thing with the, all these expansion teams, or two of them, but is that they're going to keep the talent together while there's that real chance of having success together. And, and we haven't seen any of those real young guns leave yet. No, but they've kept everyone that really wants to, both those clubs. And then look at uh, John O'Patton, could have gone to the Bulldogs, but even with a knee Rico, he yep, signed yep. the state of the Giants. All right, that's our final buzzer. Just quickly from both of you, something you'll be keeping an eye on over the next week? Well, the Bulldogs, another team that's been talking themselves up, has wanted to move down, perhaps into the top three, to land one of those two young key position players. Jason McCartney, their list manager, big job ahead of him to try and do it. Like you, Matty, I'm really excited about Dangerfield. I think this is a real agenda setter. I think that he's a player one year out from free agency. This is going to really... This could change the way clubs deal with this situation in the future. So even though the Crows on Monday said, stop talking about it, it's not happening, you're keeping the story alive? No, look, I think that they've really got to read the situation. And if they're getting a bad vibe, they think that he could go. There's some really, There will be some really good deals on the table now much better than they'll get next year and they've got to have a look at it. All right, watch this space. Nick Bowen and Ash Brown, thank you for joining us here at the trade table with plenty more players and picks sure to change hands over the course of the next week. We'll be back with you next Monday to debate the latest talking points. Now, don't forget afl.com.au is the destination for all the latest trade news as it happens. For now, I'm Matt Thompson. Thanks for watching.